Hi, Scott Croft here with Boat US. It's time to let the tackle box do the talking. You've probably had a great season of fishing, but that gear inside that tackle box probably needs a little look at. Today we're going to do a winter tackle box overhaul with Boat US angler expert Steve Chaconis. Let's take a look. So Steve, the weather's getting cold. What's the first thing you're going to do? Well, I, I want to get things out of the boat that shouldn't be in the boat uh, to take a look at. Stuff I know I'm not going to use even if I go out a few times during the coldest weather. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look and see what I have in here that I know I'm not going to use because there's stuff in here that I was using during the summer that I just haven't taken out yet. Top water lures, I know I'm not going to use them at all. And I keep everything organized in these Plano tackle boxes because by lure, by category, and I actually put a label on them. This one is top waters. I actually have this one labeled as top water. They may need new skirts. They may need new, need new tails. The hooks may need to be sharpened, but I'm going to take all these out. Uh, some of these, like buzz baits, they may have chipped heads on them, like this one right here. Uh, this one has a chipped head. I might just take this in and, and do a little touch-up work on it. You can see how it, the paints come off of that yep. one. Yep. Okay, so I'll do some touch-up work, take an inventory, see what I have. Yep. Okay, uh, some of the other lures, uh, like my crankbaits, these these might also need to be painted up. These get scratched up, thrown around, they hit rocks, trees, wood, they get scratched up. Sometimes the hooks get dull. I might replace some of the hooks as well. Basically kind of do an inventory, kind of while it's still fresh in my mind from right. the season, what lures actually worked, which ones didn't. Maybe I need to take some of these out and replace them with some others, but I can be more effective in my approach to my tackle box for next year by paying attention to it now. Depending on where you store your boat too, it's always good to remove everything just to make sure nothing walks away over the winter as well. Yeah, true from uh, from a you know theft prevention. You always want to take it out. These locks you only keep the honest people honest. Uh, yep. You'd hate to have you know each one of these lures three, four, five. Some of them are fifteen dollars a piece, and you yep. get about a hundred lures in here, and it can start adding up just in one of these boxes. Also, there's stuff that just ends up getting dropped in here stuff that's not in any kind of a package it's just odds and ends that I threw in here during the year I probably never even tried them get all this stuff out of the boat and into the house and get to work well let's go take a, a, a walk into the house and see what we got to work with over the winter So we brought the lures inside. What's the first step of a winter tackle box overhaul? Well, the first thing is the hooks. Uh, I can guarantee you that every lure I've got there has caught a lot of fish this year. I'm going to take the hooks off and put them back on. You need a good pair of split ring pliers. Just basically take the hook off. I always keep a, a bunch of hooks all organized so I have all the different sizes and the different colors that I need. I usually use red hooks on the belly and, and the uh, back hooks get this. My topwater lures, I have feathered trebles. I replace the feathered trebles in the back. So that's the first thing. The second thing, after I take the hooks off, that's an easier time to handle these things because you, uh, you won't get cut or, or get a hook snagged into you. Yep. And I'll go ahead and, and repaint them, touch them up. By the way, a good tip, old fingernail polish. All your, all your female friends, they've got shades they don't use anymore. It acts as great touch-up paint, but if you can't get that, you can always go to a hobby shop uh, like, like Lurecraft or uh, Jan's Netcraft, and they have uh, lure and paint vinyl finishes. And instead of using but, uh, brushes, even though I do have brushes, <clears throat> these are very inexpensive. Q-tips and pipe, pipe cleaners. When you get done with a pipe cleaner, just cut the end off, and then you keep using it until it's all gone. Good tip. In addition to your crankbaits, your spinnerbaits need a lot of love too. It's not just shining up the blades and making sure they're in good shape and sharpening the hooks. But one of the things that I do that, that makes a spinnerbait last through the whole year is that I tie a little thread. I'll use some nylon sewing thread. And you can see it in there. You tie it just above, and on this one's a brand new one. You can see this one is just above the, the rubber collar, that little beige collar there. You see the little end of the sewing thread that I tied on there. And what this does is it, it keeps that skirt on there there the whole summer long so it won't come off even if that rubber collar rots away like this one did yeah the rubber collar has gone this one will stay on the hook even longer and your skirts won't slide off for you and all it is is just nylon sewing thread and I always keep some of it here in my shop if I need to change color I just take a magic marker and I dye the dye that's right just yeah. take it rub it on there it makes it red blue black whatever color you want but that's a big tip that'll help make that spinnerbait last the whole summer 
If you're a bit more organized, you can actually take apart your reels, use a schematic. I suggest blowing it up on a copier machine to make everything look a lot bigger. On a spinning reel, this is the line roller. You want to put a drop of oil here and a drop of oil here. And then go ahead and re-spool your line after that. That helps that oil work its way into it when you go ahead and, and re-spool. The second place you want to oil is right here and right here. That's your bale hinge, okay, for your bale arm on both sides. You want to put a drop of oil on either place. Then you want to put a drop of oil right here around the handle, just at the base of the handle. And again, after you put the oil in, you want to work it around by turning the handle of the reel. And on this one, on the bale, you want to work it in like this, just work it in. And on the line roller, you can work it back and forth just by applying. Either I use a, a Q-tip or a pipe cleaner, and I'll just roll it. This bearing rolls, and I'll make sure the oil works its way into the top and the bottom. The bait casting reel depends on how much you want to take apart, but these things can be taken apart relatively easily. You can access the bearing on the spool by undoing this cap, put a drop of oil on it. The bearings usually come off on this particular reel. It's just a side plate. You unscrew the side plate, it comes off, and the bearing is right in here. Just put a drop of oil right there, and, and you don't want to over-oil any of your reels because it will cause them to bog down. Okay, once you do that, then you can put the, uh, put the cover back on. You can also oil while you have it open. You can oil right here. That's, that's for your worm gear. A little drop of oil in there, and again, crank this thing. Uh, let it work itself in. Let the oil work its way into there. Put the cover back on carefully, tighten it back up, and now the last place that you want to oil is right here. This is the worm gear. You want to oil the worm gear, a drop or two on the worm gear, and maybe um, a drop here on the, on the paddles to the handle, right here and right here. Once you do that, just work that oil back into the reel. This reel is about 12 to 15 years old, and other than a few scratches here and there, it, it runs just like a brand new reel. What I like to do when I take these reels apart is I try to use a compartment like this so I can put all the parts in there as I take them off, clean them. I use uh, little bottles of uh, little baby baby uh, food bottles. I put lighter fluid in there to clean the, the bearings. I'll use a toothbrush and use WD-40 to clean everything else. I'll also regrease everything and put new oil in all of my reels as well. But to keep track of everything, I actually have little index cards. And on these index cards, I have etched into the bottom of the reel a number. That number will tell you what reel this is and what kind of work that I've, I've done on it. I just picked this one up used and I'm going to go ahead and start to rebuild it and it has nothing on there. But you can see some of the other ones that I've done. I put down the date that I did it, what I did. Here's one I've had since 2003. I cleaned it and put new parts in it and all of my records go back. I started doing this back in the uh, uh, around 2000 is when I started doing this with all my reels. So every one of my reels has may also have some notes on there as to what kind of problems that I've had with them or maybe a certain way of putting them back together. But this is great for if, if you want to do all the maintenance on your own reels.